In this next section, we're going to create some additional cross sections. Actually, we're going to even recreate these existing ones and create another set down through the rest of our project that will also include some drainage structures. Now, we could lay those out in this file, uh, but to give us a little bit more practice, we're going to jump over to a blank file, just another file that's already been set up, so that we can recreate that first set of, of sections for a little bit of practice, and then we'll create the additional sections for our drainage area. Uh, before we get in and do that, let's take a look at this drainage area. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit in my 3D file here. I'm going to open up my reference tool and temporarily turn off the display of my corridor so that we can see underneath it. And now we can see the little bit of this drainage network that we have in here. There's a couple inlets that sit here at station 71. We've got some pipe running down and a little bit further down the project, there's some manholes and additional pipe that should show up on our cross sections. So we'll zoom back out there and f turn the corridor back on so we can see everything we're working with. Now, as I said a moment ago, we're going to go ahead and recreate this first set of sections purely for practice. We could have done this exact same thing in the first file we started in. But we're going to go ahead and recreate those. So we'll go to our drawing production tool, name boundaries. We'll put it in cross-section mode, select our drawing seed. Even though it was already selected, I always like to reselect it just to make sure that it's getting all of these settings set. Perhaps I've overridden something in the last time I ran it and I, I need to go back to some of my default settings. So it's always a good habit to get into to reselect your seed file. Then we'll go select our geometry. As soon as we select our geometry, the name is automatically filled in based on our geometry, and I can start locating my start station. I can key that value in here. I can use this icon to force it to the start station, or I can pick it graphically off the screen. You can then go and input the stop station. Again, I can input it in any of the manners. I have a precise stop station here of 70 plus 50, so I'm going to go ahead and key that in. Now the one thing that I am going to do this time is I'm going to turn off create drawing because I don't want to create my drawings yet. I just want to create my name boundaries along this entire geometry. So I'll data point to accept that. It creates those name boundaries and I see those in here. Now I'm going to go create back and create another set of name boundaries. Again, good habit. Just reselect my drawing seed. I must repick my geometry. I'm going to give it a starting and ending station. This one I'm going to go from station 71 up to station uh, 90, which is at the end of our project. Now before I create these, the one change that I do want to make is I want to give these some more bottom clearance. I want some additional depth to my cross sections so that there's room for those drainage structures to appear on there. Now the reason you might add some additional depth to a section is you might want more room for annotation around it. Or maybe you're adding some other data out of your 3D model on there. Perhaps you're laying out a road next to some buildings and you wanted those buildings to show up. As long as they were modeled in this 3D environment, the walls, buildings, anything that you draw out there, it's going to show up in your cross sections. But you may need to add some additional top or bottom clearance depending on how your seed files are set up. So I've changed my bottom clearance to 10, and I'm going to also change the name on this. And I'm going to say, well, these were for my drainage. So I'm going to call it London Road Drainage. And we'll data point to accept and let those create. So those new name boundaries create. If I zoom in on them here, you can definitely see that they're deeper. They go a little deeper than these do. They're taller. So we've accomplished that part of it. Let me introduce something new to you here. This is called the Name Boundary Manager. So up on the ribbon menu, this little icon in the lower right corner of the Name Boundaries area, will bring up our Manager dialog. This is a resizable dialog, so yours may not be expanded yet. You can expand it out. And then I'm going to go to the Cross-Section Groups area, and you can notice that we've got a couple of cross-section groups that have been created. And hopefully you recognize that these are those names that we were keying in or letting the software pick for us when we were generating the name boundaries. This is the name of the name boundary group. 
So that first group we created, London Road, from station 50 down to 70 plus 50, has gotten named with the name London Road. The second group that I created, London Road Drainage, which ran from 71 down to station 90, is created with this other name, London Road Drainage. So we can sort these out or organize these into separate groups. That can be to our advantage or disadvantage, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. The thing to keep in mind is when we go and create sheets, we're going to create a sheet, a set of sheets from a single group. So doing this the way we've done it right now, I could create a set of sheets for this first section, and I could create a different set of sheets for the section, second section. What I could not do right now is create a single set of sheets with all of these sections in them, which is really what I'd like to do in this case. So I've actually made a mistake here. This isn't really what we want to do in this situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these name boundaries here. So I'll pick select those and then select the delete tool and notice those have all disappeared now out of both our plan view and our 3d view they're also gone from the listing here all we see is our London Road group let's close that dialog for a moment go back to our name boundary and let's run those again so we'll pick our cross-section tool the seed that we want to use the geometry we want to follow beginning and ending station, so I'm going to go from 71 to 90. I want my bottom clearance to be 10. All that's the same as what we set before. The difference is right in here. Do I want to give it a name and create a new group like we did last time, or do I want to just append this into an existing group, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to change this group choice from new to the name of the group that I want these added to. In my example, London Road. And we'll go ahead and let those create again. The name boundaries create. They all look good. They look just like they did before. I'll go back into my name boundary manager. And notice now I have a single group. If I expand that out, just make the dialog a little bigger here so it's easier to see. You can see that we have cross sections running down in here, down past where we ended our narrow ones, the 70 plus 50, and continuing on. Now I can toggle on and off these show icons, and I can see those name boundaries toggling on and off in my 3D view, so we can indeed see these are all of the cross-section name boundaries created in a single group. Now in this situation, we did not allow the name boundary tool to automatically create the drawings. We just created the name boundaries. At this point, we're ready to create those cross-sections. And we're going to do that by selecting the group that we want to create the cross-sections for and then telling it to build the drawings from here. We can either click the icon at the top to tell it to go ahead and create them, or you can right-click on it and choose it from there. And say, yes, go ahead and create those drawings. It will start processing. Takes a couple of seconds for these to process. Remember, there's a lot happening here as it cuts all the sheets. Um, in this case, 81 different sheets, annotates everything, combines them all, puts them on cross section sheets, lays them out on the sheets themselves. Now, this was not quite real time in the video. I did clip out about 60 seconds of video here in the processing of these. So when you do process these live, it'll take slightly, about a minute or so longer than what you saw in the video. Um, but it's now finished up. Uh, it's finishing the last of the annotations and building the sheets, and we'll see our sheet file display here momentarily. It always displays the final sheet file in the set for you. So that's what we're seeing here. This last sheet file only had a single cross-section on it, uh, the way the layout ended up being. But if we go to our different views here, we can see the different sheet models. Notice the sheets show up with the little white icon, and the drawing models that make up those sheets show up with the gray icon. So let's just zoom back to the beginning. Let's look at station 50, and we can see that we've got four different cross-sections on there. Zoom in on them, kind of look at those the way they're laid out. Now let's move up to station 71. This is where our drainage network started. Uh, so if I move up to the sheet at station 71, 
You can see the cross sections number one are a little taller because we had asked it to provide that additional clearance. But we also see that it saw these three dimensional elements in the 3D environment and cut through those. Here we're cu cutting through some of the inlet structures as well as the pipe connecting between them. And if I go up a station, we start seeing the pipe running along or parallel to the roadway here. Zoom in on this real close and you'll notice that you are seeing a very detailed drawing. This is not a cell being placed in here or scaled or anything. This is an actual cut through the three dimensional object. In this case, I'm seeing the inside and the outside of the walls of the pipe. Um, it's being scaled because my cross sections were generated at a 10 to 1 scale. So the pipe, even though it's cylindrical, looks elliptical here. So everything is accurate. It's at the proper place. If that pipe moves, the cross section is going to update instantly. Remember, everything here is a live reference. So if the 3D model changes, whether that be my design up here, my pipes, anything, it's going to update automatically. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.